Just like having the right information is necessary to make solid hiring and lending decisions, being engaged in our community is important. Datafax is proud to support the positives and be a presenting sponsor of The Spark. State Systems is focused on protecting life and property. As a local, privately owned company, our foundation was built on providing all businesses with complete fire and security protection and infrastructure cabling. State Systems is proud to be a part of the Mid-South community and the presenting sponsor of The Spark. Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance has been serving the Mid-South since 1954. We've always focused on supporting our community and believe in promoting the positives, encouraging engagement, and leading by example. Lipscomb and Pitts is proud to be a presenting sponsor of The Spark. Additional funding for The Spark provided by Christian Brothers University and Power and Tell. This month on The Spark, our theme is Talent Attraction, Development, and Retention. We'll learn more about three organizations working to recruit talented people to our community, equip and develop leaders, and accelerate collaborative projects that engage and retain our citizens. Have you ever been excited by a new idea? inspired by watching someone lead by example? When we talk about creating change, we start by sharing the stories of everyday heroes who are making a difference in their own way, so we can learn and do the same. This truth is the power behind this show, which is focused on business and community leaders that are leading by example to give back, fuel change, and create new opportunities for the Mid-South. I'm Jeremy Park, and this is The Spark. They're focused on talent for transformation. I'm here with the president and CEO of New Memphis Institute, Nancy Coffey. And you've been working on leadership for a long time here in the Mid-South. Give us a little bit of history for New Memphis Institute. So we date back probably 20 years um, under different names, but really we've always known that it's about human capital talent for transformation is all about the people. So that's been our focus the whole, the whole run through. Well, I'm a little biased because I've gone through the programs. I'm a graduate of the LDI program. So let's start with LDI. Describe the LDI. Program. All right. So that's uh, really where it began. LDI stands for Leadership Development Intensive. It is a program for seasoned execs, three and a half day residential. It's called Leadership Development Intensive for a reason. It is designed for you know, leaders that really understand that um, the more they can come to understand themselves, the more effective they can be and the more ease they can have in their work. So it's a chance to kind of go deep and sharpen the saw uh, in concert with peers from all different sectors. Um, we fly in the Center for Creative Leadership, their number one ranked in the world, to deliver the content. So it really is a world-class experience right here in Memphis. And it's intense. I mean, you go through and you get to learn from all the other executives and you get a lot of benchmarking. You have counselors that come in and they sit down with you one-on-one -on -one and they do a deep dive. And to your point, sharpening the saw, you get to figure out what are your strengths, what are the weaknesses, how can we refine this, how can we make you more effective, not only in your business, but more importantly in the community. Absolutely. It's, it's very strength-based, as is all of our work. Um, we really know that every great human being, every great business, every great city is trying to be better today than they were yesterday and uh, the LDI is that's that's it at its essence how do we take the great leader and make them even better so talk about the fellows program fellows program so we celebrate our 10th anniversary this year uh, we fellows program is really for the mid mid-level manager uh, that is eager to take responsibility for their hope about where the city is going and so uh, the fellows program like all of our programs begins with the internal work self, self uh, development sort of leadership development personal leadership development but then moves quickly into community impact. So the, the sort of the heart of the fellows program is what we call the community action project, where the fellows are embedding themselves, working in teams as loaned executives in local nonprofits and helping those organizations uh, to build their capacity and deliver better on their missions. One of the big areas you're working on in terms of talent attraction to Memphis is something called the Memphis the Summer Experience. Yes, so the Summer Experience is designed for collegians. Um, we know that Memphis as a city can't take for granted that a college student is going to choose to launch their career here. And so the summer experience is our proactive opportunity to really embrace collegians and give them the chance to know Memphis as a young adult, give them the chance to see our city through the lens of fun, through the lens of uh, economic opportunity, through the lens of where they can serve. Um, so it's about nine events, all of them are free throughout the summer. Um, we had about 600, well over 600 participants this last year from almost 300 different companies. Wow. Um, a, a good, nearly half of them are, have Memphis roots. So we like that, that we have a chance to sort of sell the city to the native um, because it's not, you know, it's not their daddy's Cadillac. I mean, this, this city has something to offer that they may not have been aware of when they were in high school. They get to take ownership of their own city. Absolutely. It's really invigorating. It's a fun program. And you're working in education too. Talk about Embark. So. Um, Really, you know, we, we know that um, education is an extraordinarily, to me, a teacher is an extraordinarily, 
demanding uh, profession. And um, we know that as a city, one of our key um, sort of levers for change, you know, maybe the key lever for change is educating our youth. So Embark uh, embraces the teacher in the highest need schools and gives them a chance to connect with peer professionals, really deeply connect, truly connect, authentically connect with peer professionals in other sectors. So it is a leadership development experience, uh, but the leadership development is really in service of our primary goal, which is talent retention. How do we keep not only these young teachers in Memphis, but their peers who may be in graphic design, in medicine, in right. law, in insurance, wherever, um, how do we plant them here? How do we get them to really engage and have a huge affection for the city? Well, if you think about it, they're so ingrained, they're so entrenched in their work by being able to make it easy for them outside of work where they can build those relationships, because that's the key, is building the relationships, the friendships that are going to keep them here. Absolutely. The social network is the number one driver for retention. All the research shows that. So talk about, you know, one of the things that was interesting, I, I attended a Board of Governors meeting and they were talking about the power of knowledge workers, the power of this creative class. Give us an idea, you're talking millions of dollars if you can retain knowledge workers here in Memphis. Well, indeed, and, and you know, uh, the, I don't have the exact figures at the tip of my tongue, but I do know that Memphis is a city that really needs to kind of um, shore up our, our, our focus on the knowledge worker, in particular the knowledge worker that's 25 to 34 year old kind of this millennial demographic. We have half as many as a percentage of our population as Nashville does, for instance. Um, and it is the key indicator of economic vitality. So we're really pleased at the New Memphis Institute to have a big opportunity to focus through Embark, which is 420-somethings, and many of our other programs to sort of focus on how do we get these folks connected to one another, job one, connected to the city, um, and really kind of developing sort of a, a movement of positive, engaged, effective, and people. Well, speaking of positive, you are great champions of positives. Talk about ways that we as the public can get engaged because you have things like Memphis 101, you have the Celebrate What's Right lunches. So talk about some of those ways that we can plug in. Sure. Um, so our whole theory of change is what you pay attention to grows. So we are, uh, we know that everybody has an opportunity to be really intentional about shining light on what is going well. Celebrate What's Right is, is at the heart of that uh, sort of all of that work. It is uh, sponsored by the First Tennessee Foundation and um, it's a series of luncheons. We'll have a whole lineup uh, ready for next year, so check our website. But you know, it's designed to sort of lift up what is going well, lift up makes a, what makes us proud to live and work in our community. Um, another really fun experience is the Memphis 101 that you mentioned. Memphis 101, um, you know, any, any Memphian lifelong uh, can really enjoy it. It is also a really powerful tool for someone who's relatively newly relocated Absolutely. here. We have a whole suite of opportunities for the relative newcomer in Memphis 101, sort of uh, maybe the, the, the first or second thing somebody might want to do uh, upon landing here. It's, it's, a, it's a social history, it's, it's, uh, it's provocative, but it really builds an enormous sense of loyalty and respect for the city. We, we measure all of our work and we see um, loyalty grow you know, by leaps and bounds just in the hour and a half experience at Memphis 101. All of these programs are, are it definitely free. gives you perspective, that's for sure. And it's yeah. free, you know, that's, that's a whole other, it's you make free. it really easy. Yes, exactly. So again, check our website. Um, another product that's a little bit newer is called Instant Memphian. So playful, uh, targeted more to the millennial demographic, but it's sort of uh, you know, a series of, of the, the really interesting, informative, maybe weird uh, parts of our city. You know, how do you, how do you eat like a local? How do you play like a local? How do you brag like a local? Um, so again, just you know, in a short hour, how can you really become like a native? Um, so that's, that's a really fun one. Uh, one of my favorites actually is the amazing race, amazing, Memphis amazing. Um, it's this chaotic foot race through downtown, uh, scavenger hunt kind of, and we, we have teams of six, but you're only allowed to know one other person on your team. Oh, wow. Yeah, so in the course of two hours, you know, you really kind of have this huge bonding experience with these other um, folks. And you're learning about our city's history because that's what you know. A lot of the clues are about. You got to dress dress one of the mannequins at Lansky's and learn about all this, you know. <laughs> um, but all of these, again, all of these experiences are designed so that a newcomer or a long timer can really kind of have a, have a quick opportunity to be engaged with the, you know, the pathway to deeper engagement being clear through our organization and others. So tell them where they can learn more about New Memphis Institute. NewMemphis.org is our website, and uh, you know we we welcome um, questions and suggestions, and certainly encourage people to to um, join our newsletter because that's where you're going to find out all the stuff that's going on. But uh, we check our website uh, because that's where we have all of our spring events lined up as of uh, the end of January. Well, greatly appreciate everything you're doing here in the community and for coming on the show and sharing it. Absolutely amazing. Thank you. Appreciate being here.
They're an HR, outsourcing, and consulting firm heavily focused on talent attraction, development, and retention for the Mid-South. I'm here with the president of HRO Partners, Austin Baker. And for starters, let's talk about the business and then we'll talk a lot about community investment. Um, but give us a little background on HRO Partners. HRO Partners is a human resource consulting and outsourcing organization that works with government entities, businesses, uh, small businesses that don't have an HR department can hire us to be their HR department. Large companies that need a, extra help for an open enrollment or compensation or training can hire us to come in and bring a seasoned team professionals to do that. Uh, but we're all about the people strategy in an organization and making sure that that is taken care of in a more proactive way. Talk about, you know, in terms of some of the things you're doing differently. Obviously, you've got the compliance, the regulatory, the, the kind of the day-to-day -day things, but you're doing things a little different with companies in terms of helping them maybe get their employees more engaged in the community. So focused on modified work schedules and volunteerism and activation. Give us maybe one or two things, especially in the HR world, that are a little different. You know, when it comes to success in an organization, it's all about engagement at the end of the day. You know, there's a book called I Quit and Forgot to Tell You. Uh, you see, you want to have an engaged workforce, and that means that you want them engaged at the workforce, but also in the things that you care about. Uh, so that's more and more what especially younger talent is looking for in an organization. They want to engage with that organization to give back and make a difference. And so for a lot of organizations we work with, we're plugging them in to all the various community uh, activities that we're in to help them engage their workforce and create a, a winning culture. And you're heavily involved with SHRM, Society of Human Resource Management. You uh, serve on those boards, you sponsor a big awards program as well. Give us an idea when you talk about taking what you're learning with HRO partners to a larger scale through SHRM, what that looks like. SHRM gave me the inspiration to pursue this career path. Um, as an early student, I was involved with SHRM chapters. Uh, it's a wonderful organization of 800 professionals, and now we have the opportunity to help them lift up the best and brightest through the HR awards, which we sponsored this past year and helped develop, uh, but also be able to help them with programming to help HR people to take a time out for a second to be recognized in their profession, but also to learn together, to share those best practices. Over 800 people are involved with that, and it's a wonderful organization to be a part of. I want to switch gears to the personal side. You, yourself, uh, one of the founders with Dr. Bob Taylor at the University of Memphis of the MILE program, tied to the University of Memphis. Give viewers an idea of what the MILE program means. What does that stand for? MILE stands for the Memphis Institute for Leadership Education. So we take the best and brightest talent every year, juniors and seniors, and they get paired with business professionals. Uh, this year to the tune of around 210 people total uh, are in the program. Uh, but what they do is they'll hear a great speaker on a monthly basis. They do outside activities, job shadowing, mock interviews, company tours. It's all about getting them to ready for life after college, getting them to think about their careers. But for organizations, it's all about talent uh, retention and giving back as well. And so we have a lot of companies that come to Mile to find the best talent. Well, yeah, if you think about it on all sides, it's a win-win-win because on one side as a student, you're learning all of the employable skills that you're not necessarily getting in the classroom. So it's etiquette, it's the job shadowing, it's resumes, it's personal branding, all of those dynamics. And then on the business side, to your point, you get a chance to mentor, to work with these top students and realize, wait a second, these are some great people we'd like to bring in. Let's form these relationships. And next thing you know, they're your, they're your future leaders. By all means, it's, it's about that for the mentors, no doubt. But it's also about personal development. I mean, what, what makes you a better leader than teaching someone else how to lead? It makes you be really reflective. <laughs> am I really following my core values? Am I really the type of person that I want to be as a leader? And how am I improving as well? And it's actually, we actually have studies being done on Mile on the effect on the mentors and the protégés of what that does. It increases ethical leadership. It increases a variety of things that makes both the mentor and the protégé better for it. Switching gears again, you're heavily involved in People First. Describe what People First is. People First is a cradle-to-career talent pipeline that, that pulls together collectively for collective impact around common goals, a variety of organizations uh, from both pre-K through K-12, uh, support organizations around those organizations, all the way through um, higher education and then on to talent retention. And so we get the great opportunity to think about our talent pipeline in a, in a new and innovative way and to be very proactive about developing, retaining, and building up the talent that we have in the community um, so we can be able to all be better. And so when you think about it, it's, okay, what can we do? Everything from preschool, kindergarten, at birth, all the way through to providing more opportunities for our workforce, correct? Absolutely. It's, it's kind of like asking the question why several times and keep you going backwards. 
you know, um, and so we, we work to uh, really help people that need the most help. We also work to be very progressive and really data driven in the things that the policies that we advocate for and the collective work that we encourage all of these wonderful organizations to come together and share the mission work of each other to be able to make a difference in the lives of all the talent that we have in our community. It's a huge undertaking. And when you think about, so you're involved in WIN and quite a few other groups that are providing opportunities for people, so that's the idea. So what would you tell viewers that say, you know what? Uh, many times the things that you're working on don't see the limelight, they don't see the spotlight, but there is a lot of good, there's a lot of progress being made. What would you tell viewers or maybe one or two, one or two of those things that are their progress points that they might not know about? You know, we have a lot of really wonderful things going on in, in educational reform sectors. We have innovations like the Goodwill Excel Center, which is the, one of the first adult charter schools where people get to come back and have a second chance to get their diplomas with child care taken care of, changing the whole lives of families. So you have wonderful stories like that going on. You also have wonderful stories of people that are deciding to make a difference in their lives. They're reconnecting with when they're getting employed. Every single day there's people on the ground doing a lot of hard work. And if anything our community needs more of is, is massively scaled up numbers of volunteers and mentors to be able to plug into these organizations to not only help make a difference in the person's lives as mentoring, but to make a difference in their community and every person that you're able to touch. Well, you're a huge example that one person can make a, a big difference in the life of another. Tell them one more time where they can learn more about MILE program, but also to HRO Partners. Yeah, if you do a quick Google search on MILE, it's very easy to find that way. HRO Partners is hro-partners.com. Um, if someone wants to get involved with any of these organizations, I'd love to plug them in. I always have a short list of people that have a need in a different area that are looking for an engaged and wonderful person to be involved with them. I'd love to help. Well, greatly appreciate you coming on the show for all you do for the Mid-South. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Jeremy. One of their efforts is famously known as Choose 901. I'm here with the Executive Director for City Leadership, John Carroll. And everyone knows, especially the hashtag Choose 901, but there's a whole organization behind it called City Leadership. So give us a, a little bit of a snapshot for City Leadership. Yes, I started City Leadership about five and a half years ago. And uh, the reason for it was for us to help nonprofits, schools, government agencies, churches, synagogues, help those things be more effective at their role. You know, a long time ago, Memphis hedged its bets on uh, those things, uh, helping solve our problems and helping really engage and create the best and preferred future for our city. And so we just thought, man, if those leaders can do their mission better, uh, then we'll all be better. And so we want to help those leaders do that. And that's how I started it. And we've done a lot of different things in that area, but we focus on recruiting, developing, and catalyzing those leaders for the city of Memphis. And that's where, I mean, that's a, it's a big, hairy, audacious goal when you talk <laughs> about the work you're doing, but I like the fact that you actually break it down. I mean, we did an interview a while back and you mentioned that, you know, you're not focused on bringing millions here. You're actually focused on two to 5,000, which that's very realistic. Describe kind of your philosophy in terms of how to engage and, and be a catalyzer for Memphis. Yeah, so we believe that uh, everything rises and falls on leadership and that if you can get the right leaders here, that they'll actually attract all the other right people that need to be in that space. And so, uh, and that by going too broad um, and trying to get 100,000, 200,000, you know, 500,000 people to move to Memphis randomly doesn't really get a focus of why they're coming here or what their real responsibility would be and what their niche would be in that space. But if we could solve individual problems with individual or, or groups of uh, strategic leaders, then we know that they'll be magnets for people and talent around the country. And we also know that they will help raise the tide uh, and call people to great leadership, even that are already here in our city. So talk about where Choose 901 came from and how it's evolved. Yeah, it's a great question. It's, a, uh, it's an interesting deal. A lot of people think about it as uh, locally as something where they find out what's happening in Memphis. But uh, it started through some conversations I was having in 2011 with some local leaders uh, who were running Teach for America, Memphis Teacher Residency, Downline, Church Health Center Scholars, Youth Villages, um, and St. Jude. And they have these different residency programs that were going underfilled and they would have uh, maybe budget for 20 residency spots or 70 spots and they would either they'd have enough applications but not enough people qualified or wouldn't even get enough applications to fill the spots that they had available and so we just saw a real miss 
um, just through those organizations from 2012 to 2020, we were gonna miss out on about 3,000 to 3,500 uh, college graduate high potential millennials coming to our city of positions are already funded and had payrolls for them. And so we thought, I mean, that can't happen. And, uh, and so Choose Down to One was created as a collaborative national recruiting campaign to help fill those roles. And so as we were telling people elsewhere uh, about these opportunities here, we weren't just telling about the jobs they could have here, but how much fun they'd have living here. And as we started telling that story about how much fun they'd have enjoying the city, local Memphians were like, that's my Memphis. Right. That's the Memphis I love. That's Memphis I like being a part of. You became a champion. Yeah. And so those people just started seeing over and over. They're, they're like, I want to talk about that. I want to be a part of that. That's that's my voice. That's my whatever. And so some local Memphians have really jumped on to uh, identifying with this Choose Not on One banner. And talk about, because it's a balance, you've got the recruitment on one side, but you have the civic pride on the other. So you've got this piece where, okay, we're promoting the positives, we, we want to tell the story so that you want to move to Memphis, but at the same time, we want to tell our own story better to our own Memphians so that we enjoy our city and take pride. Yeah, those things go hand in hand. And so uh, we believe that optimism, right, is very magnetic, it's very attractive, right? And so that as much as we can exude optimism, not only about how much you can enjoy the city, but an optimism, how you can make an impact, how your job can make a difference. And uh, especially for millennials, they want to know that, right? Uh, they want to have fun while they're taking care of uh, uh, women going through teenage pregnancy, right? Or they want to have fun while they're investing their lives into researching things at St. Jude. And so um, they want to have a they want to have a blast while they're doing that, right? And so we want to show them that hey, you can come enjoy this city and you can make a difference. And so those kind of things go together throughout uh, not only this campaign, but we see it as something that can really be attractive for the whole city to go, man, I do really, this is a great place to live. This is something I should be a part of. And this is something that can get me out of my house and get me more engaged just here locally. And you do a lot of statistical research, a lot of analysis, heavily numbers driven. You focus a lot on millennials, obviously. So yeah. give us maybe some of the stats or some of the, the things that people might not know when you talk about the work you do, especially with millennials. Yeah, so it's fun, right? And so one of the things we try to understand is, is how millennials think, how they talk, what they think they're gonna do. And, and so, you know, they're very future oriented, um, but they're also very seasonally oriented. So one of the things we try to train people a lot is that if you try to recruit millennials thinking about the rest of their lives or their careers or even terms like retirement programs, those things actually scare them off. They're way more interested in how can I invest the next season of my life? What's the next year, two, maybe four years? What's that gonna look like? And so if we can get organizations to even think about reclassifying opportunities as two to four year commitments, you actually could probably increase your talent level, especially when you're trying to get people to move from other cities, right? So a graduate from Yale, who's never been to Memphis, never even been south, right? Um, may consider coming here for a two year residency program, not only in a nonprofit, but at AutoZone, um, because it gives them a chance to try out the city. They really want the experience to get to whatever. And then as they come here, we really indoctrinate them to fall in love with the city and then they don't want to leave more than likely. And so, so that's a big deal. I think the other thing to think about is that millennials in general, 70% of 20 year olds believe that within the next five years, they'll be working for themselves. Wow. Now that won't happen. That won't be a reality, but that's the way they think. And so to be able to speak that kind of entrepreneurial language or thinking about this experience they're having at your company is actually something they're wanting to take towards their own career or even giving them that space inside their company to be entrepreneurial, to be their own boss, so to speak. And so giving them that environment where they can meet your goals will actually help you recruit top tier talent and keep your organization edgy instead of it getting over the hill, so to speak, as it's developing. So how can we as the public be a part of Choose 901, of city leadership? How, how can we become better champions for our city? Well, I think one is that everybody can know that, you know, uh, everybody here is a part of recruiting to Memphis, right? And so understanding the, the, the terrible impact of, the, of uh, broadcasting the pessimistic thoughts about our city uh, only hurts us, right? It only perpetuates some of those things, right? But knowing that everyone can look for the positive thing, look for the optimistic thing that they can uh, share with other people and share with ways they can do that. And so, um, and then understanding the opportunities that are for millennials and being able to push those stories out. At Choose 901, you're able to see a lot of positive stories that you could share on your social media and Facebook. Um, but there's also on our invest page, you can see different organizations that have opportunities for college graduates for 20 somethings. And so most people know someone in their 20s looking for a job. 
uh, whether it's locally or nationally or internationally. And so, uh, and just to be able to share with that person, hey, I know that you're going to graduate next year. You should check out this page so you can know about living here. Uh, or I know that you would, uh, you're maybe looking for a new change. Hey, this is a great place to start. Check out choose901.com. And so those are great ways that Memphians can get involved and engaged. Well, I greatly appreciate everything you're doing with Choose 901 with City Leadership. Appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you so much, and we appreciate everything you're doing in Memphis, brother. Attracting, developing, and retaining knowledge workers and leaders is a critical component to the success of our city. As a community, we're only as strong as our leaders and the conviction and pride we all have for the Mid-South. Ideas and vision are today's currency, and in a world rapidly driven by technology, knowledge workers and college-educated employees set the stage for growth and development. We all win when we can attract global talent, develop our tremendous leadership potential, and then retain individuals with opportunities to succeed. That's why the work that city leadership is doing with its Choose 901 effort and the programs of New Memphis Institute are so important. Likewise, companies like HRO Partners and individuals like Austin Baker are playing an important role in all three areas. As Choose 901 proclaims, now is the time, Memphis is the place. Thank you for watching The Spark. To learn more about each of the guests and to share your stories of others leading by example, visit thesparktv.org. We look forward to seeing you next month. We hope that you'll join with us in creating a spark for the Mid-South. Just like having the right information is necessary to make solid hiring and lending decisions, being engaged in our community is important. Datafax is proud to support the positives and be a presenting sponsor of The Spark. State Systems is focused on protecting life and property. As a local, privately owned company, our foundation was built on providing all businesses with complete fire and security protection and infrastructure cabling. State Systems is proud to be a part of the Mid-South community and a presenting sponsor of The Spark. Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance has been serving the Mid-South since 1954. We've always focused on supporting our community and believe in promoting the positives, encouraging engagement, and leading by example. Lipscomb and Pitts is proud to be a presenting sponsor of The Spark.